In a Melbourne suburban lounge room, punk rock band The Overrated is working on one of its numbers. But it's numbers of a different kind that lead guitarist Andrew L. V. Price has on his mind. In less than a fortnight, he faces his toughest gig, representing Australia at the International Maths Olympiad in Spain. It's like the most important maths competition in the world for high school students. Hey, maths one numbers all equal to two. So in Sydney, the other five members of his team are in their final group training session before they leave. Last year's silver medalist, Max Menzies, is giving some last-minute tips. Okay when, you, okay, when you differentiate log, you get this. You get something like this, OK? <laughs> yeah, they are a lot of fun. They're pretty informal, but the, the point of them is just so that we can share ideas as a group. With maths, there's often a lot of ways to do one problem, so with our training sessions, we get to see all our different ideas and how it can all come together. So that means that two Each member was chosen after a series of local and national maths competitions. The youngest is 15, the oldest 17. If I, as, a very, as an experienced maths teacher and someone who's got a degree, if I tried to do the questions, I would probably get none of them right. They are extraordinarily gifted students. One of the things that I enjoy the most is uh, you end up with a, a student who produces a solution better than the solutions that we can come up with. And I find that a delight every time when they've been able to just see through a problem more elegantly and, and beautifully than perhaps any of their examiners have. Today, the International Maths Olympiad has expanded to include 90 nations. It was initially founded for European countries under the former Soviet Union and was first held in Romania in 1959. Pretty much every science needs a solid mathematical grounding and, uh, and if you're going to mount any sort of serious technological program you need lots of math mathematically able people. The competition is intense with students having to complete two four and a half hour exams over two days. Everyone loves to shuffle their scripts against the table very noisily when they finished a problem, just to sort of finish it off and there that's done and everyone can know about it and that can be, you know, can really put you off and, you know, if you don't keep your cool and, um, you, you know, you let it get to you psychologically, that can really put you off um, and damage your performance. Last year, Irene Lowe and Giles Gardam both won bronze. They're hoping to do better this year. It really depends on the paper and how I'm feeling on the day. If the questions suit me, maybe I'll have a good day and get a goal. If the questions don't suit me, maybe I won't have as good a day. In 2007, Australia came 22nd in the overall unofficial tally. Top is usually China. Last year it was won by Russia. Um, so they're sort of at the top. Um, America and Japan are also very good. Are they taking performance-enhancing drugs? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But uh, you always hear rumours about the Chinese kids being forced to work at maths and for hours and hours, and then you know they leave school for a whole year to focus on just the Olympia. But no one knows if that's true. But it's an Australian who still holds a record at the Maths Olympiad, which remains unbroken. In 1988, Terry Tao, at age 12, became the youngest person to win a gold medal. In 2006, he won the mathematics equivalent of the Nobel Prize, the Fields Medal. I would like to be an example that, uh, that Australians can, you know, can excel in, in just about anything. I think, um, you know, it's not just sport. But students aren't heeding the call, according to a report published in May by the Australian Association of Maths Teachers. Even though Australia does well internationally, we don't have as many students doing high levels of senior secondary mathematics and university mathematics as we really need to, to, um, I guess, maintain the strength of the economy and particularly in the high-tech kind of areas. Mathematician Cleo Creswell runs a maths bridging course for students enrolled at Sydney University. I like to say mathematics is the study of patterns. So it's not about the numbers. You know, sometimes I go to parties and people say, oh, you're a mathematician, what's the square root of 567? I don't care. What you're doing is you're actually studying links and connections and you're moulding your brain to uh, be logical and see complexity. Giles Gardam also knows that the numbers and symbols on the board open up endless possibilities. 
Most of the great advances in science and maths haven't been because we've been trying to solve the everyday situations. It's from researching the abstract that we've been able to find things that we can apply to our everyday lives. Um, the team will have one last week of preparation in Portugal before they head off to Spain. They'll compete against the British in a competition which is reminiscent of another famous sporting event. In the last exam, uh, we'll be comparing our marks and whoever wins will be taking home the mathematics ashes and we'll be burning the other team's exams. <laughs> Whatever the result, the future for these students is extremely bright. Oh, well, the world is their oyster. They could end up solving, you know, global warming problems because maths clicks into everything. So they will ha have, they don't even realise yet what doors they're opening for themselves.